Is it on? Oh, so it's on. Right then, uh, I'm going to do a video today uh, called Helmets in Boxing. Now, there's a lot of... There's a lot of helmets in boxing I've noticed, uh, so but I'm not, I, I wasn't going to name any. I put a, a tweet out yesterday for people to email me on Porky Porky Corner, not Porky's Corner, Porky Corner at mail.com, and we, we had plenty of emails and plenty of tweets. 27 names all together came, so I picked the top 10 voted over a 24 hour period now. A lot of people have tweeted me and they say, no, oh, how come so and so isn't in the list, or so and so and so and so, he does this, he does that. It isn't what I've picked, it's what you've picked over 24 hours now. I've got up today and I've looked at it and you know, it's changed, but I'd already put the top 10 out over that short period of time, so... These are the top 10, uh, who had most votes. Eddie Hearn won in top 10, but he is now. Prince Patel and Anthony Fowler, they would have been near top. And, and Tony Bellew would have been about 8th after two days. So it all depends on that moment in time, what you put the... You know what I ask you about, about there might have been a lot of people who think certain people behave like a helmet when I put the tweet out and but obviously after two days it's changed but I'm gonna keep it as it is for this first list and that we'll change it after the month eh? Uh <laughs> Top at list Paul Smith. Uh Why is Paul Smith a helmet? Well Obviously, I've read everybody's comments and that, and I am blocked myself of Paul Smith. I can't even remember what I said to him. It wouldn't have been anything nasty because I'm not like that, but I know what one of my friends who joined Twitter, because I said, oh, you ought to join Twitter. It's the right laugh. It's good banter. And she said that she tweeted Paul Smith and wished him all the best against Andre Ward. And he... he uh, here we are. Paul Smith blocked her. So, what can you do? What what can you do if he's going to block? If he's going to block you, so he ended up blocking her, and she come off Twitter. Then she said, "You know what? It's not for me." That she said, "I've wished somebody all the best who was going to have an hard fight in in America," and. Uh, she wished him all the best and he blocked her so whether he had a complex or I don't know or whether he just does it to be like Mayweather you know to get people's backs up so that people watch him so he gets beat I don't know but he didn't really uh, he didn't really sell a ticket when he were a fighter I remember Paul Smith being on a show with Bellew on a Frank Warren show sponsored by the Sun newspaper they were on the undercard don't forget, you had Paul Smith and Tony Bellew. They're the ones that were giving O'Hara Davis grief, aren't they? Ringing Eddie Hearn up, demanding that Matchroom get rid of him. So, now, Paul Smith, they were all over the Sun newspaper, wasn't it? O'Hara Davis. He never, he never knew anything about Hillsborough. He was born after Hillsborough, wasn't he? About three years after Hillsborough. It's like somebody born in 1974, three years after that Ibrox disaster. You remember that Ibrox disaster in Scotland? Were it Ibrox or were it Celtic? It one of the big grounds in Scotland where a lot of people got trampled to death, didn't they? If you were born three years after that, you wouldn't really know about it, would you? I was born around about that time, 1970, 71. And uh, I've only known about it because I'm a football fan. Uh, but Awara Davis is not a big football fan. And... If truth be known, Eddie Hearn didn't listen to Bellew and Smith because he offered O'Hara a deal, but I think Tony Bellew and Smith, Paul Smith, were hypocritical to have a go at him considering they fought on a f the Sun newspaper sponsored show for Frank Warren. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. But... 
the reason Paul Smith got loads of votes, he got like 64 votes, which is a lot in it really. You know, tweets and emails and so far, 64. Bell, you got 57, so they must rub people up the wrong way. Or I might have just caught it on a day where some people who don't who don't like them were on social media at that time, or over that period of time they they romp, romped it. Oh, um, uh, if you look at Paul Smith's career, he uh, you'll see that he got beat by for English title against Stevie Bendel. Now. Stevie Bendel's no great shakes, is he? So Paul Smith then went up to mid super middle, I think, and he never really carried any power at middleweight. His best wins, Tony Dodson, who were at the time 24, 5 and 1. He won the British title, didn't he, off Quigley. I think he was 12 and, 12 and 1 at the time. 12 and 1 is a novice, isn't it, really? Because Paul Smith at the time were an established fighter, so he's fighting a guy who's 12 and 1 for a vacant belt. So, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, Paul Smith got lucky getting a British title. He defended it against Tony Dodson, and then fought James DeGale, then he got beat with James DeGale. Never look. I don't even need to have a look on there. I know Paul Smith's career. I know he fought Tommy Tolan, Jamie Ambler, and, and uh, David Sarabia. Their records are shockers, the journeymen. And then he fought Arthur, Arthur Abraham twice, who were in Super 6, and Andre Ward, who were in Super 6. Turned up for Andre Ward fight, four pound overweight. So, if people say anything or are critical a little bit or don't agree with Paul Smith they get blocked or he abuses them on Twitter uh, he doesn't do his son any favours I think his brother Callum's got a bit more class and so have the other two uh, I've only spoke to Stephen I spoke to him at the Frotch Groves way in in Manchester years ago and I thought he was a nice kid he just left Frank Warren at the time and I respected him for leaving him and he, I thought you were a decent kid, but I don't know Paul Smith too, I can't really comment saying he's a helmet, but his behaviour, he doesn't endear himself to fans, does he? And let's have it right, Paul Smith, when he at the Commonwealth Games, he was going to be a superstar, wasn't he? They were tipped for a gold medal. He got beat by Jean Pascal in the final, but everybody said big things were tipped for Paul Smith. And you know, he's ended up a millionaire, hasn't he, in property, so he's done all right, hasn't he? Because his, his CV is not really that good. I don't want to pick holes in it, ideally in facts. His best wins, Tony Dodson, who'd had 30 fights and won 24. At the time, he'd not really beaten anybody of any great shakes. He beat that uh, Barboza, didn't he? But other than that, Tony Dodson had not really done anything. His claim to fame was getting levelled off Carl Froch. So... But I like Tony Dodson, I think he's a genuine kid. And Paul Smith went life and death with Tony Dodson, who'd been beat by Quigley. And Paul Smith had beat Quigley, so he really had an easy defence, didn't he? After that, he got with Eddie Earn, didn't he? And sort of like blagged his way in, didn't he? Good pundit, though. Unless he's commentating on his friends or matchroom fighters. I think he does a good analysis. He was better when he were at Box Nation. But he doesn't endear himself to fans. That's why you look on Twitter, you've got loads of parody accounts for Paul Smith. Because he winds them up, doesn't he? Like I said, he doesn't do his son any favours. He blocked Dave Allen uh, uh, a year ago, 18 months ago. So... Fucking hell. Oh, Jesus. So, oh, David Allen's got uh, David Price on Joshua on the card. Jesus. That'll be a tough fight for Dave. Here, I've heard uh, Dave Allen's got David Price at Wembley. Oh, that's a tough fight, that, isn't it? Tough fight, that. Very tough fight. I thought you were going to have a rest. 
Jesus, he's crazy, isn't he? He's crazy, man. He should have had a rest after that Yoka fight. What do you think? I can't believe it, man. I was hoping he was going to have a rest. My kid's mum will be really worried about him now because I think she fancies him. <laughs> but he's a brave kid if he fights David Price, isn't he? Very, very brave. So, anyway, I hope you're all right, mate. You take care. Yeah, that's a tough fight for Dave Allen, that, if that's true. So... But, uh, on to this. Paul Smith, number one. You've been voted the helmet of the month from Porky's Corner by all the people who follow me. So I'm not going to say Porky fans because that's cringe, isn't it? It's fucking cringe. I'm not famous. I'm just a fat guy on a with a camera and a mouth. Let's well, speak the truth. Uh, Tony Bell, you, you're voted number two. Let's look at Tony Bellew's career. He's had three pay-per-view fights. Cleverly, a stinker, and old peg leg Davy Day on wooden legs, shot to bits. And he's going to get a fourth one against her because that's his pension fight. He get beat in that. I hope he doesn't though, because I'm going to have a bet on him this time because I'm sick of betting against him in accumulators. Uh, he's got four vacant belts: British, Commonwealth, European, and a WBC World Title belt. You, he's not beat a champion. Last champion he beat was who? He was ABA champion, but that's a vacant belt, innit, when you fight for that, innit? So, you don't take it off a champion, do you? So, he's never beat a champion. And he's had the same amount of pay-per-views as Carl Froch. He's on TalkSport, which is a Sky-owned company, defending contracts about Joshua and Wilder and defending anything match him. He's like the defender. He's like uh, Luke Skywalker, innit? Defending uh, the Earth and all whatever it is in Star Wars. I don't watch stuff like that. There's Enterprise or is that Star Trek? Fucking hell, I don't know all that stuff. But Tony Bellew is the Luke Skywalker of Matchroom, isn't he? The co he is a Matchroom company man. Uh, I don't really want to talk about him to be honest because he caused me quite a lot of problems. Uh, in February this year, ringing Dennis up and ringing office up, complaining, oh, Russ has said I'm a fraud. He's your right hand man, he's bang out of order. You can't say that about me, you have fought world champions and that. Who have you fought who's a world champion? Who? David A. And Cleverly. When you fought Cleverly, he'd never beat a world champion. After Cleverly fought you twice, he went and beat a shot to bits 40 year old Nath, uh, Jürgen Bremer. Beat him in Germany, well done for a regular belt. Now, is that a world champion? Bremer had beat a champion, but he'd only beat two champions. You know, you know great shakes. So, Bellew, you're a helmet. I would have had you at number one, Bellew, but you've come in at number two. So, well, I'd have had you number one, mate. Not that I don't like you, I admire you. But you you like you work your mouth, don't you, and rub people up the wrong way, so you're voted number two helmet of the month. Paul Swift number one, Bell you number two. I think Johnny Nelson's coming at number three. Let me have a just have a little check. Let me have a little check. Uh Here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are. Let's have a look. Johnny Nelson, number three. Uh, 
Uh, what's the matter with this fucking phone, man? Just press the button, Russell. Come on. What am I doing here? There we are. Oh, Spencer Fearer, number three. Johnny Nelson, number five. Paul Smith, number one. Bell, you're number two. Spencer Fearer, number three. Spencer Fearer. Saw Spencer Fearer at a show. He had these massive bins on. Massive, massive bins. You know, like that. Uh, have you ever been on YouTube? Pimping Curly with. 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson. Well, in it, he plays his brother, he plays two, plays two characters, and his brother's a square bear. He's a computer geek, and he wears these glasses. If you Google, Google Pimpin' Curly, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's this little internet series that 50 Cent does about this pimp. And his brother's a geek, and these glasses that he wears, they're... Uh, they're, they're like what Spencer Fearing had on, and he was quoting uh, poems that Don, Qu Don King quotes and stuff like that, and and j he just he just he's another one, and he defends anything that's uh, matchroom, doesn't he? Do you know what I mean? It's uh, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's unbelievable! It's unbelievable what the stuff he comes out with. So, what can you do? It's uh, one of them things, isn't it? It's just people that you have to put up with. They have they have bills to pay, don't they? People in in boxing. So I can't really be too critical, can I? But I'm only going on what's been voted. Spencer Fear and uh, he's a helmet. Uh, he, I would have had him at number two, but he's number three. I'd have had it. Bell, you Spencer Fear, but you can't win them all, can you? I don't like the stuff he comes out with. Uh, I've never ever seen him pick a fighter against a matchroom fighter, even in when it's blatantly obvious who was going to win. You know, like Kel Brook against Golovkin. You know, it's. I don't, I don't want to talk about him. He is a helmet, so he's justifying his pound for pound ranking as Porky's number three helmet of the month. Just for the stuff he comes out with. Number four is Adam Smith. I'd have, I'd have had him a bit further down. He'd, he's got a job to do. He's another one, isn't he, Adam Smith? He's got a job to do. But it is what it is, isn't it? It's, uh. Jesus. Eddie, uh, I, can't, I can't get that out of my head, that now. Dave Allen against Pricey. I can't get that out of my head. It's uh God, I can't believe what David's doing, man. Yeah, I can't believe it. He said he needs a rest after that good hiding off Yoka. He then risks it against Nick Webb. Now David Price, a big puncher like that. Sooner or later, somebody's gonna get hurt. Nah. Uh, somebody's gonna get hurt on a matchroom show and I don't really want to go on about it because I don't think David listens to me anymore. Anyway, he's going to go his own way, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? He's going to do his own thing, isn't he? Uh, fuck, he must be off his head. I just hope that that ain't true. But if it is, it's an exclusive. Uh, Johnny Nelson, number five. Johnny Nelson, Jesus. We all know about Johnny Nelson, don't we? Why he's been voted that. He comes out with all sorts of stuff. Let me tell you a little story about Johnny Nelson, shall I? I'd have had him number one as well. I'd have had all of them number one, all these. Johnny Nelson. Something happened up at Ingle Gym and Glyn Rhodes, I think it were at Hilton or Ponds Ford. It were at the weigh-in. Glyn Rhodes, trainer, MBE, grabbed him by throat. And Caldwell were there, Brendan Ingle, a few of us, and anyway, all got Brock up in the melee. And his missus, Debbie, attacked Glyn Rhodes. She was the only one with any bollocks out of him. Because Johnny had no knackers at the time. I think he'd had about ten losses then. And uh, Glyn Rhodes ended up with a big fine in front of board. Police got involved and they never took it any further. They gave statements, Caldwell and Johnny Nelson. 
and Glyn Rhodes ended up with a big fine off British Boxing Water Control. Johnny Nelson and Dave Colwell gave evidence. That's a true story. True story, that. And, uh, you know, you don't give evidence, do you? Even if it's British Boxing Water Control. People say, oh, you're in the grass here if you, if you don't go to police. Well, they did go to police, didn't they? The August statements. Police didn't take it any further. It were fucking handbags. But Glyn wanted to rip his head off. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go on about why, but uh, but Johnny Nelson and Dave Caldwell they gave evidence. Caldwell later said, "Oh, somebody told me to. I didn't want to get involved. Look, you give evidence at board. There's a couple of other people I was going to mention who would give evidence at boxing border control, but I'll leave it because I've already. I've been in front at board where they pulled me about stuff." when I went for my seconds license and you get grasses in boxing as well, it's a dirty horrible fucking business do you know what I mean, but it is what it is isn't it, but Johnny Nelson, we know why he's been voted that don't we, at number 5, because he said Kel Brook beats Golovkin and he smashes Errol Spence up he could see how Conor McGregor beats uh, Mayweather he said uh, Tackham's like Olafield and George Foreman when he were fighting Joshua, trying to hype it up, giving it the matchroom company line. Now Johnny's been around boxing most of his, nearly all his life, all his adult life anyway. He should really know better, shouldn't he? Anyway, I don't want to talk about him now, he bores me. Next one, number six, Gareth Davis. He's probably justifying his number six ranking, Gareth Davis. He... Uh, He's a big lover of Stubbub. I don't know if you know that. Big lover of Stubbub. I pulled him at a show. I says, here, what do you think about this Stubbub? How come you never write out in your column? Stubbub do a great job, just like Eddie Hearn, and then he shot off. And I, well, people just want what's best for boxing, Ross. Well, Gareth Davis, let me tell you, I'm not a big fan of Stubbub, but I do want what's, what's best for boxing. And Eddie Hearn's last show is a step in the right direction. And he got lucky with pay-per-view. But they need to tell us the pay-per-view criteria, but you need to grow some balls, Gareth Davis, and take your tongue out certain people's arseholes, like uh, Tyson Fury's and Anthony Joshua's. Because you've got their head fucking ten foot up their arse. So, do you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, you're justifying the position in the top ten, Gareth. I might have to do a top fucking 20, eh? Number seven, Anthony Joshua. Is he a helmet? Yeah. Is he walking billboard, isn't he? Beats headphones on and under armour, boxer shorts on and praying in, 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 uh, sunglasses and all beats headphones on and in a mosque and all that oh crazy and all that kind of stuff and what is he trying to what's he trying to prove a convicted drug dealer who battered somebody to a pulp at the end of the day we know what you are fleet street have got a pile that deep on joshua file that deep that they don't release just like they wouldn't say anything about the kid that he had but, you know, people say he's a nice guy and that, but personally, he's not my cup of tea. He came in Terry Etchison's cafe when I were waking up at uh, Dennis's nephew's scrapyard a few years ago. He said, back at EIS, I was sat there in cafe and he walked in, he looked over at me. He knew who I were, and I just looked over and I thought, yes. But he would have splattered me, wouldn't he? We a kid with a ponytail. They used to go in there. And they weren't eating fruit and veg and all that. Like, they put tweets out. He had a chicken and chips dinner. So, from Terry Etchison's Greasy Spoon. So, and it's right at back at EIS. It's where all the fighters go. So, don't be falling for all them tweets where he's cutting fruit up and that. Eat all your vitamins and your fruit and you can be big and strong like AJ. I remember Hulk Hogan saying that. And we all know what happened to him, don't we, when it all came out about him. So, he doesn't do his son any favour, Joshua. He's a helmet. He sent them, he sent them messages to Eddie Chambers. Because Eddie Chambers uh, used to train out at gym that I go to all the time in Bolton. Now, I don't want to say name at gym because somebody on here might say I'm name dropping. Now, you get tools on here, don't you, who don't have any subscribers, no picture up on this. They have a go at you, don't they, on YouTube. But that's another thing, isn't it? But he sent, tweet, he sent texts to Eddie Chambers going on about Black Superior Race and... 
there were other stuff that he's done and that, and it, it, it all gets covered up, doesn't it? Like he had that kid, didn't he, to that girl. That all got covered up for months and months. They're trying to create an image so that men and women go to his fights. So they don't want him to be seen. Joshua's not allowed to have a girlfriend. You do know that, don't you? You will never see pictures of Joshua with a girlfriend. They're trying to create this so that men and women all love him. So they don't want him to be have a girlfriend because they might take criticism over it, whether it's, say if it's a girl and she's not the same colour or if it's a girl who's got a past, they might dig up mud on her so they reckon he's, the people around her, it's best off that he's, so he's not having a girlfriend but I can assure you that <laughs> there is girlfriends and that's with an S on end. So he, he's justifying his position as a, as a helmet. He don't fight. He don't want to fight Wilder, does he? His best wins a guy 40 odd year old in his 42nd year, 18 month on settee. So I know I'm tearing into these people on here, but they need it, don't we? Dave Caldwell. Now there is a couple of stories that I could go on about on here about Dave Caldwell, but I'm not gonna. I'd have had him number one with the rest of them, all joint number one. But uh, he's only had one British champion, hasn't he, from debut, Kel Brook. And I felt sorry for him then, because he lost Kel to Dominic, didn't he? But all the rest of him, he's had dropped on his lap, hasn't he? Because he's become a bit of a yes man, hasn't he, for Eddie Hearn. But, even though I, there's somebody who's close to me who don't like him, uh, he is a decent trainer, isn't he? He doesn't know his stuff, so we can't really have a go at him too much. But when he had them amateur kids at his gym and this other trainer had five amateur kids and he had five amateur kids, they both went the separate ways. He didn't do anything with his, with his amateur kids, so I don't know really. Did he just get lucky? Bell you had already fought for a world title. When he got him he was already a British chat he'd already won a British title. David Price had won a British title. Jamie McDonald were a world champion when he went to him. Uh, Gav McDonald, were he a British champion? I think he were, wasn't he, when he went to Dave? Anthony Fowler, if he gets a British title with Anthony Fowler, that's his second one. Curtis Woodhouse went there, didn't he, from debut, but when it came to fighting for a British title, Curtis went with Adam Booth, didn't he? And uh, he told him to retire after that, Dave. I think he spat his dummy out, didn't he? He didn't want to train him for Willie the Mon fight, and... Well, he keeps saying he wants Bellew to retire. Every time Bellew gets a win, he says, I want him to retire, but he keeps coming back with him. I want him to retire for his own safety. Well, walk away then. Then if he gets hurt, you can't be blamed. You're not going to walk away walk away from 10% of a couple of million, are you? You're getting a quarter of a million pound a fight, Dave. You're not going to walk away, so don't keep coming out with retirement lines. It just makes you sound like a helmet. David, I'm hearing you've been offered pricey fight. You thought you'd come and told your uncle Porky about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you've been offered one for Newcastle, but... Well, that's what I'm hearing, mate. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you an heads up. So, all right, mate. It might not be true, then. You know what boxing's like? There's an old saying, in there, that... Uh, you remember that guy I told you about from Sheffield, Alan Dono? When I was in Moreland's room, he used to say, uh, Rumour is a pipe blown by surmisers, jealousies and conjectures. And I used to say, who said that? And he'd say, Alan Dono, 1996. But I think it was an Al Capone quote, actually, 1925. But, no, I just heard a, a little dicky bird just told me that you've uh, been off at Davy Price fight. But you must be crazy if you take that, mate, because... It's an hard fight for you after that yoker fight, innit? You said you were going to have a break, but... Anyway, if you, you know where I am if you want to come and see me later. Alright, mate, take care. Uh, where are we up to now? We've just done Caldwell, haven't we? Yeah, if you, if you want somebody to retire, you walk away, don't you? That's what you do, you walk away. You don't just, you don't just hang around, do you? So... 
you don't just hang around here if, if you want if you you don't hang around boxing do you if you if you want somebody to retire you get out there don't you or you walk that's what you, you do you walk do you know what I mean uh, number nine Anthony Fowler I don't really well, I don't really follow Anthony Fowler much but he, he was one of the 27 people that uh, people said were an helmet and he obviously got the ninth most votes but this morning he had loads uh, but like I said I did it over the first over the first day but Anthony Fowler he's unbeaten isn't he I can't really say what about him I suppose I haven't really seen much of his interviews uh, so I, don't, I can't really comment about him but they've voted in number nine uh, I've seen one interview where he comes across as I don't know, a bit cock, bit Boxers aren't they a different breed, aren't they? I mean, I wish them all the best. I hope nobody ever gets hurt in boxing. I don't have anything bad in my my heart for anybody, but I just don't like how some people behave in boxing and some of the things that goes on behind the scenes. I don't I don't agree with. Uh, like my friend Liam Cameron, you know what what's happened there. The, that's for him and Dennis to sort in it and the Varda testers, lawyers and the board and all that and I hope Liam Liam I hope Liam wins his case but he's boxing in it, promoters have a job to do, they've got T V deals and they need belts, don't they, on T V stations and but I'm always one of them people who sides with a fighter. And uh, that's why Dennis always used so oh, you don't understand you've still got L plates on. Well look I'm a fighter's fan. I like boxers. I like boxers. I like being in boxers company. There ain't any boxers that I've never met who haven't really had a bad attitude. They all have something about them because they're all boxers, aren't they? So I respect all boxers. Even Tony Bell, you respect him. Josh, you respect them all. You know, sometimes they can be a fantastic and you can feel really good in a boxers company. Other times they can be a bit, a bit off, can't they? I don't know. I've been in Frotcher's company a few times, sometimes he can be right quiet or and then other times he can be all over you because they got three sessions a day, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? And uh, it's I think Frotcher's mellowed a bit since he's retired, but when he was fighting, you know, I've been to Carl's house before and he's you know, he's got some he's gotta do his third session, so you like you're rushing your cup of tea and stuff like that and boxers uh a funny breed, they're a funny breed, uh, but they deserve respect because they're getting punched in the head, aren't they, all the time? And it's not nice, is it? Uh, but I don't know, I'm funny foul, he's unbeaten, isn't he? He might get a bit of sticks as we call well. Bell uses his manager. Uh, it's one of them things, isn't it? Uh, Eddie Earn won in top 10, can you believe that? I can't you believe it, I was like, Ugh! Even this morning he's not, you know, he had some, a couple of votes, but he's not. Maybe that show's done Eddie Earn a lot of good, that, uh, that pay-per-view he's just put on. But, Frank Warren, number 10. So Anthony Fowler, I don't really, I can't really comment on Anthony Fowler, I've never met him. I've seen him fight, I, he ain't really fought anybody, to say he's quite mouthy, has he, but... Boxers, they can be mouthy, they're, be mouthy and they're trying to sell themselves. You might meet him in real life and they'll be genuine. I mean, when I first met Awara Davis that night, I fell out with Dennis at Leeds. I met him at that Hilton Hotel, he was sat with his mates. But Dennis goes, oh, Awara Davis is over there, why don't you go say hello? I went over. And he was nice as pie, nice kid. But I thought, and I didn't like him on Twitter and some of the things he was saying, but he'd been told to say stuff to sell the fight, so I think you should not judge a book by its cover. Well, all these fighters, they're trying to sell tickets and they're trying to create something behind the scenes, like David Allen. He's created this character, hasn't he, David Allen, and every time he fights, he has like a story, doesn't he, to tell. You know, he's been through the depression, the gambling, the getting the, the getting punched about by Ortiz, his lips so his tongue hanging off. He can't pee for weeks. He, he he answers every tweet. He goes to every show, every amateur show. He sits for hours doing selfies. He's grafted to build his fan base up, hasn't he? And his fan base has probably overshadowed his achievements because Davy's not won a Central Area belt yet. But 
when David fights, Eddie Hearn will get a sheet of people who buy the pay-per-views in an area like Doncaster. He'll think, right, Dave Allen, Doncaster, we've got him from that town, him from that town, him from that town. And he'll know what the numbers are and people will say, Do you know what, I am going to pay £20 for watch that because there's a kid from area who's, who's fighting, which is good, isn't it? So, and Eddie will know that, even though David's not pleasing on the eye, is he? He, he's, he's, he's got a story to tell, hasn't he? You know, he, there's a different, even we've had the retirement story, and he, he's created a bit of a character, and you know, he's getting a book deal, he's going to have a book out soon, so he does white rhino t shirts, clothing, and you know, he, he's, he's a good hearted person, obviously. He did me a big favour a couple of months ago, but he's a good, big-hearted person, so you have to respect that. He's getting in that ring, and don't forget, he's never been dropped by Joshua, and Tyson and Joshua, he's done probably 520 rounds with Joshua, he's probably done the same with Tyson and Yui. He's never been dropped. Never been dropped, so what's that tell you? But he does take a lot of punishment, doesn't he? Now, when you're taking punishment, like what David's taking, I think that you need to move your head a bit more. Peter, when he was with Peter Fury, Peter used to say, move your fucking head, I don't want a tough guy. Move your head, slip and slide. Now, if you go to Peter's gym, that all these fighters, they don't get hit, do they? Yui don't get hit, Tyson don't get hit. They, they know how to, and I don't think you could teach David that. David got set in his ways. And he's not most dedicated trainer, but he's a tough, 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 tough man. He's a tough man, and uh, he deserves his chance, doesn't he? If he can get a few quid out of it and get an house bought, why not? Why not? That's what I say. Why not? He deserves it, doesn't he? But David Price, if that's true, it's a fight too far for him. David Price punching him. If he if he don't. If he don't knock David Price out, and he gets punched by him, and it, and it goes ten rounds, it's more miles on clock for a kid 26 year old, isn't it? And I worry sometimes that one of these days is going to take too much punishment, and I'm going to have to send Eddie Earn a nasty email like I did after Ortez fight, and tell him what I really think about him, because I just don't agree with it. I want to see David Allen in with opponents where we know he can beat and he can learn his craft why don't you treat him like these next gen lads he's the same age as, uh, as some of them next gen lads treat him like them give him a bit of respect try and bring him on as a fighter give him a wbc international belt against some guy we know he's going to win against and let's see how far we can take it but david's got to play both sides that he's got to keep his part at the lanny and He's got to uh, train hard, hasn't he, and get in shape, like he did for Lenroy Thomas. If he can get in shape, man, then Eddie might not use him. Because if he's on AJ card next month, he ain't got long to prepare, has he, for price. Now, if he takes that fight, he's taking it for money, isn't he? That's how I look at it. He's taking it for money. But we'll see, won't we? We'll see. But uh, it'd be a tough fight for David. That, but David Price is vulnerable in here around whiskers. And if he hits him like how he hit Webb, he's gonna go in here. But if he don't, God, he could be fighting biggest puncher in boxing. And I put Price up there with Wilder for power. Maybe not speed, but for power. I would put him up there. Which brings me to the number 10, we've done Anthony Fowler, the number 10 is Frank Warren. Frank, old fish eyes, Warren, is he a helmet? I don't know, you know, I've come, I've softened a bit on Frank Warren, and I lately, he's, uh, I've seen to have softened on him a bit. Uh, I think the O'Hara Davies Jack Cattrall fight, he went up in my estimation when he put that fight on. I think he's in a position where he's got to put good fights on because... I don't think the money's there for him. I, I, there's some, uh, he's not saying about this BT Sport deal. Frank Warren, 
always goes against Matram on a purse bid and tries to blow him away. But he didn't on this one, did he, with Saunders and Andrade? And that's the second time Billy Joe Saunders has gone on the road. Third time, isn't it? Sorry. Because he fought in Scotland. Scotland, Canada, and now America. Third time, no home advantage for Billy Joe Saunders. What's that tell you? Frank, Mr. Home Advantage Warren, it looks to me like the home advantage has, uh, has gone. It looks like it's gone. Why ain't he getting his fighters home advantage? Why are they going on road? Why is Tyson Fury in talks to fight Wilder in America? Because that would be like career suicide, wouldn't it? Why would he want to do that, Tyson? Why would Tyson want to go abroad? After fighting Sarifi, box rec 62, and Pianetta, box rec 140, Tyson's box rec number 5. Why would he want to go and fight box rec number 2 abroad when he's not match fit? Yeah, he might have got the weight down, but he's not match fit, is his tools are not sharp. He's like trying to chisel a door with a screwdriver in it at the moment. Whereas when he fought Vladimir, he was a sharpened brand new chisel, wasn't he? Where at the moment he's just a screwdriver, isn't he? Have you ever tried chiseling a door with a screwdriver? You know when you're trying to put lock in the middle? You ever tried to do it with a screwdriver? This takes ages, doesn't it? it? Takes you 12 rounds to get a journeyman out, doesn't it? Or it takes you 8 rounds to get rid of Pianetta, Pianetta when really they got rid of him in 2 rounds, wouldn't it? This guy fights next. That'll probably be about 8 rounds. And then he'll say he wants to get rounds on that belt. So you can just flip it on your head. If you knock him out in one round, you can say, I'm, I'm back, I'm punching, sitting down on my punches. If he goes eight rounds, you see, I wanted to get rounds in. There's always an excuse, isn't there? But Tyson's a great fighter, but he's not ready for Wilder yet. Now, and people in boxing know that, and deep down he'll know that, but is he pissed off with boxing? Who knows? Who knows? His dad's not said much lately, though, has he? Usually, he'd, you'd have thought he'd have had something to say about Wilder, wouldn't you? But, I don't know, but... The way I look at it, he's nowhere near ready for Wilder. And you've got all these people trying to hype it up. Michelle Phelps flew all the way from Manchester back to where she comes from to interview Wilder, then came back to Manchester. Got 250,000 views on Wilder interview. Came back, interviewed Tyson in his hotel room. Got same amount of views. That's all they're bothered about, isn't it? Views. It needs somewhere to sit that Tyson down and say, Tyson, you're not ready for Wilder yet, but you will be. But you're not ready yet. But who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him? Who were telling him when they were partying and running wild? There was nobody there to tell him, mother. He's going to ease his own man, isn't he? You live by the sword, die by the sword, but he needs somebody to say to him, you are not ready for Wilder yet. You need more fights, then you'll be ready for him. That's just my honest opinion, for what it's worth. But who am I to give an opinion? I've never had a boxing fight in my life. I've had plenty of other fights, but... Who am I to give an opinion on, on, on a sport we all love? Who? Who? Who am I to give an opinion on that? Well, nobody. But... It's just my humble opinion, I don't think he's ready. I thought he was embarrassing against Sarifi, totally embarrassing, I thought he was a circus. And I felt for him. And in my opinion, Frank Warren stopped that fight. But I wish him all the best, and I hope he ices Wilder if he fights him, but I can't see him fighting him. I think it's a PR stunt, but who knows. You hear stuff in boxing, there's a lot of bullshit around, isn't there? But who knows, I just hope at the moment that David Allen's not going to fight Price because, God, he's in for a long night if you don't catch him, innit? I want to see Dave get some easy wins and get up to, you know, 20, get 20 wins, another five or six wins, you know, a couple of years of learning his craft. I want to see his trainer say, no Eddie, we're not going to take that fight, we want to fight some easy ones. We want longevity. We don't want Dave washed up, do we? Walking around, dug, 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 looking like that, age 29 in three years, do we? Looking like, no, no, no. We want him to be 
articulate and age 29 with you know an house bought and a few quid in bank and not having to worry about having to take hard fights because that's what it's all about isn't it it's a it's boxing isn't it but there comes a time where you have to take the proper fights don't you you can't get to world level like some of them and then just want an easy ride do you know what i mean you've got to test yourself but he's gone opposite way around it hasn't he? he's like testing himself from the beginning of his career 9 and 0 and he's fighting autism white and <laughs> and then you've got Audley Harrison gold medalist and he's fighting Bin Men for the first 18 19 fights he just doesn't add up he's done it all wrong I think he's been thrown in at deep end because he's popular I think Eddie's thought, Dave Allen's popular, he'll put numbers on the show, sell a few tickets, get a few pay-per-view buys in. We'll throw Dave Allen in against so-and-so and he'll get beat, but we'll offer him a big bonus. Well, he shocked, him, shocked you this time, didn't he, Eddie? And won and you've had to pay him his bonus. Now, it's easy for David to get his head turned, isn't it? So let's hope it isn't David Price. Let's hope he has a rest. And if he does come back... It's October 13th at Newcastle, and it's a bin man. He deserves a bin man, doesn't he, I think? A two or three bin man, and learn your craft and get the rounds on the belt and develop a bit of a style instead of that coming forward style, taking shots. Develop some skills and, you know, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see him in with David Price, because if he gets knocked out, well, where's he going then? He'll have fought Yoker, Webb and Price in space of two months or something. Well, well that, what's all that about? I, I, wouldn't agree, I wouldn't agree with that. In space of two and a half months that'll have been, wouldn't it? When they fight, end of June, wasn't it? July, August, September. In under three months he'll have fought Yoker, Webb and Price. That's if it, if it is true. But... Who knows? Who knows? Every, everybody's different, aren't they? Everybody's different. I just hope it isn't true. Which brings me to Frank Warren, the helmet. Is he a helmet? Yeah, I'd say he is. He's had 45, is it? 47 law cases where he's sued people. He's lost a couple and won't rest. He falls out with everybody who leaves him, doesn't he? Every fighter he's ever had, he's fell out with. So I'll let that be a lesson to Tyson Fury and Daniel Dubois. You will end up in court. You will end up with legal lessons because once you get tied to the fish, that's how it happens. The only guy who's been with Frank Warren and never ended up with a single legal letter with George Groves. That's because he had a fight, one fight at a time contract. And that's and David A. I think and I'm not, I'm, I think he might have even had a, even had a letter because he didn't turn up at a press conference for Enzo Macaronelli fight. I don't think I think he missed press conference. I think he he copped for a letter or summer. That were on Satanta, wasn't it? Everybody cops for a letter off the fish. Everybody, even Martin from New Age Podfather got a letter off him. I've had a phone call off Frank Warren. He accused me of sending him a trout in post. Or some salmon or something, whatever it was. Hey, it wouldn't have been salmon if it had been me, would it? It'd have been tuna, wouldn't it? Tin of tuna. But no. Rung me up, didn't he? Three o'clock in the morning. Effing this, effing that. Steaming junk. Frank, I didn't send you a fishing post. I wouldn't do that. Uh, it is what it is, isn't it? But yeah, Frank Warren, you're probably deserving of your number 10 ranking. All people you've shafted in boxing over years. All bad fights you've put on. We all know why you lost the Sky contract. Frank Warren lost his Sky contract because he put Ricky Burns on against Nicky Cook. And Nicky Cook had been on a beach 18 months in a beef. He had a very nice tan, but he wasn't match fit. And he collapsed, didn't he, after, in the first round with back spasms or something. All of a sudden, he was shoved in at ranked world number 11. And then he got a world title fight against Ricky Burns. He got smashed to pieces. So, for them fights that you put on, and Khan versus Salita on pay-per-view. Fucking hell, Frank. You are a helmet. And you deserve your helmet status. You deserve your helmet status. For your 45 page contracts that you send people, 
for there's, there's other stuff that you've done Frank that I'm not going to repeat that I know you are a helmet so yeah you're number 10 helmet and I think that's 50 minutes 50 minute video been a good video on it we've got we've covered a lot of stuff uh, we've covered a lot of stuff and uh That's that. So I think we'll get this camera back, this uh, car back. Oh, mine's being valeted. I'll get it back before my kid's mum was mental at me. So. Right, all the best. Since you've been gone. Keep chucking. Shout out K Official. Shout out SAS Digital. Uh, shout out K Official. Paul and Emma at K Official. SAS Digital. Ali at Churchill's Taylors. Free shirts you've got of mine. Come on, how much longer are going to be these shirts? Good quality though, aren't they, mate? And shout out to, I'm not going to say the names, but them people who left their messages the other day on YouTube, you know who you are. Look, if you don't like my videos, don't comment, but don't give me a backhanded comment. Not when you've got no subscribers and no picture up. If you want to put yourself out there, go do, go do what I'm doing. There's about 720 people subscribed now, isn't there? And don't forget, it's a free to air channel. Well, oh, there was something else I want to address before I go as well. Somebody said you have no, f you can't generate any revenue on this channel. It's not for that. But I'll have you know that uh, me and Rico were offered X amount per month to talk about a certain subject and we knocked it back. I don't need the money, mate. But if I wanted to generate revenue, of course I could. But I do other things, don't I? I'm fortunate. But the channel is not to generate money, otherwise it'd be registered to make money on views. We're not, that's not what we're about. He's got a good job and I'm alright, so stop being jealous and being a hater. You know who you are, you can't generate income. It's not for that. See these t-shirts? Every bean that we make on these, it goes to Mickey's Athletic Club in Mexper. It's good to give back, always remember that. I forgot who you, your name on this, so you're not even relevant, but just want to point that out to you, Mr. Hater, alright? If you don't like the videos, don't watch them, but you keep watching them, don't you? And all them other ones who I've blocked on Twitter, keep watching, because it proves that you like boxing, and that's all I'm bothered about. So, alright. <laughs> right, you take care, I'm going.